Yo, what's up world of kings? It's your boy Legit back. Thank you for tuning in. Today's video is on the new old We Got Rigged Rebirth Monastery. <clears throat> what do I mean by We Got Rigged? I mean, come on man, they gave us the exact same dungeon just with new bosses. It's just Twilight Monastery all over again with new bosses. They robbed us. All right, so the first boss we have is Latanus. Latanus does do a couple different mechanics. I do want to make point here real quick that he does do seeds. If you don't dispel the seeds, it'll look a lot like this. Everybody dies except for the tank. So that was just a little clip I had from the previous run where uh, I didn't dispel the seeds. So I wanted to show you because this run, we actually don't get the seeds until the very end for some odd reason. Uh, well, not for some odd reason. It's because we DPS so quickly, we don't get the seeds. Uh, so I wanted to show you that prior. If you don't have enough DPS, which is going to be, you know, 98% of you guys out there, you don't, you're not going to have enough DPS to avoid the seed phase. The seed phase is wicked important. This actually first boss is actually the hardest on healers. This dungeon is pretty hard on healers, in my opinion. Um... But the first boss specifically, if you don't dispel those seeds, it will wipe everybody. So you got to make sure you're dispelling those seeds. This part right here, he does little balls uh, that go down. You just got to make sure you pop them separately because they do do AOE damage to the group. So you don't want to pop them at the same time or else it will wipe everybody. I like to pop the shield there, the ultimate there. That way everybody can just sit in there and huddle and we can pop them slowly. Thank you guys for tuning in. If this is your first time on my channel and you've enjoyed the content so far and you want some more of it, smash that subscribe button. If you like the video so far, smash that like button to help me out. I appreciate it. World of Kings brought us some new content. Uh, yesterday, we got this new dungeon, Rebirth Monastery. It's just a, a new version of Twilight Monastery. We also did get some more content. We got a new world boss. We got a new guild dungeon, Frostman Library. We got a new overlord arno's ruins i did make that video you can check that out as well we also got some new content some new um quests sorry brain fart we got some new quests we got some pvp pay to win content we also the most exciting thing of them all is we actually got server merge we got server two merged with server one but previously about a month or two ago server two actually merged with server three so we actually have the first three servers on server one right now so server one is actually pretty exciting again especially with that new monk coming out that new level 80 coming out new content coming out world of kings is going to be pretty fun again for a little while so that's awesome so we got those server merges we got the new content today or yesterday we got new content coming in a week or two so there's a lot of exciting things uh if you haven't gone to faction island yet with all the new you know guilds and, and every all that fun jazz i strongly recommend checking it out i know a bunch of clans swapped uh colors it's a lot more exciting again i know i went to faction island like a week ago and it was ghost town there was like two to three people to kill so um it's definitely gonna be a lot more fun that's the first boss in Rebirth Monastery. The second boss here is similar to the second boss that you had previously as far as mechanics, what he does. He does do a sword mechanic. Uh, we'll show you that here in a second. But other than that, this boss is relatively similar to the second boss that was here prior. The third boss is, is different for the most part. He does change into a wolf at the 40% phase. Other than that, it's pretty the wolf phase is is the same except for one thing other than that it's completely different all right so this boss he's just doing his standard it's obviously not melee friendly because his swords he does put this sword on one person and that person has to run to the back of the group so i mean that's the sand standard pull in Everybody gets hit here once. You got to make sure you're healing them up, back up real quick. There isn't a dispel that you need to save your dispel for, so you can use that whenever. Big thing with Lightbringers is our dispels actually are increased damage. So if we have to hold our dispel like I did on that first boss to be able to use it for seeds, it really drops our DPS. So when we have free reign to use it, it's definitely going to increase our DPS. So that's the same same thing as it was before. 
You can get away with standing right in the middle of that and you won't take damage as the tank is standing in there, but other than that. I do have a Frost Whisperer with me. I have a Weapon Master and another Rogue and then a uh, Vanguard. So that sword right there, as you see, he puts it on somebody and then that person actually places it on the ground in the back. What you're supposed to do is all five people are supposed to go and get hit by it one time to completely slow it down. So I, I saw the Frost Whisperer got hit by it once. All right, so this part right here, you can't kill these things. I haven't quite figured it out. I know somebody said there's a place to walk through them. I don't see a place to walk through them. I also, me and the Frost Whisperer are trying to destroy them. We can't do it. Finally, I'm like, screw it. I heal everybody up. And if you get, you kind of like just jump over them and take half damage. You don't even die. So nobody died there. Um, there's probably definitely a much better way to do that. So this axe over here, nobody's still picking up. Nobody's still run through it. They're completely missing the point of that mechanic. Uh, it's fine. We still end up burning them because it's just a regular adventure dungeon. But what you want to do is everybody, all five people want to go in there and slow that axe down to where it completely stops. Then one person can pick up that axe. And when that one person picks up that axe, they actually, um, you know, because the boss becomes immune when that axe is out. It becomes immune when those swords are, are coming down. And a little bit after that, the only person that can do damage to him is the person that picks up that axe. So if nobody picks up that axe, he's literally doing, taking no damage. So it's very important you pick up that axe. He does do it again here in a second. I think we might get somebody to pick it up. I forget, I'm not sure. This dungeon came out yesterday. I did do it yesterday. It was a long day. All right, so there's the battle axe again. Somebody puts it way up front, so that's not a great spot for it. You really want it in the back, so that way everybody can stop it. So I'm not gonna even bother with that because I know these axes are coming. So I pop my alt because I'm gonna try to <laughs> try to jump over these. So somebody killed that one right there, as you saw. I don't know how they did it, but they did. Um, I pop my alt, tried to go through it. I died. Whatever. I wait until those guys are gone. And then I go through. I'm pretty sure somebody has to pick up those axes and, and make a hole for us. If you're asking me, they have to pick up that axe that's on the ground. All five people have to slow it down. One person picks it up and then makes a hole for us to run through. So we don't get hit like that. But if this is Overlord. Obviously, it's definitely going to be a little bit more important. So I'm trying to slow it down so we can pick it up. See, it stops there. Somebody could go pick it up, but then it disappeared because it took way too long. Because it was all the way at the front. I'm not going to go get that right when the swords are about to spawn. This is the... Uh, you know, first time we got to this. So, we're, we're learning as we go here. It is Adventure Dungeon and I'm in here with some pretty strong people. So, even, even though we're not doing some of the mechanics correctly, we're still able to pass it. That's the second boss in Rebirth Monastery. The third boss. The third boss, he does these holy things on the ground. He charges one person, that person. If you're standing there, you take mass damage and it does a tick on you. So this is a heavy heal intensive as well. So there's those holy stamps on the ground holy marks on the ground so he just hit me with it so now i have a damage over time for seven seconds as you can see there so i'm taking damage over time if you stand in that thing you take mass damage so it's a it's a seed you can't dispel it you just got to heal through it he does it all the way up until the 40 percent phase and there's a reason that he does it So yeah, as you can see there, everybody's taking massive amounts of damage, massive amounts of damage on this boss. And the worst part is, is he goes into that 0% damage phase where he's taking zero damage. So let me tell you how hard that is for a Lightbringer to keep somebody alive when you're not doing any damage because you heal off the damage. <laughs> so I think somebody died there and I didn't realize they were, I wasn't healing them. So now I th I'm pretty sure I got a, a good idea now that I need to save one of my standard heals that doesn't require damage in order to keep everybody alive after that. He does go into this, which is actually very similar to the first uh, the first Twilight Monastery, the third boss, the first one. 
Uh, so it's very similar where he drops these on the ground. You just got to keep moving. You can move back into the old spot. It doesn't leave that on the ground. He hits me with it again. I move out of it right away. He doesn't see me there though, so I'm not sure. All right, so there I got a seed. He does the seeds at separate times, it looks like. So you can't stand in those at all. Again, this is the first time we ran it. There's probably a much better pattern where you can get him to lay these down because you need to use these for the second phase when he goes into wolf form. You actually need to use these, these lights on the ground. So there's probably a much better way to do this. This is just the first time we ran it. I'll give you an idea of what I mean by that in a second once we get to that wolf stage phase. So the Frost Whispers hit with that seed. You can see their health ticking. I could see this dungeon being pretty difficult in Overlords, so that's going to be pretty exciting when that comes out to Overlords. I know Arno's Ruins is uh, a pain, especially those mobs. Those mobs in Arno's Ruins are, they are no joke. Alright, so he hit me with it and I got stuck in that. So I got a seed and I was in there. I died. May the I ate it. Bless you. I had the seed. And my stone skin and my pet ability were on cooldown. So here he goes into wolf uh, phase, just like the first boss or the third boss in the first time this dungeon was out. He goes into wolf phase, and it says use the light echoes to neutralize his damage. So if you look here in a second, he's actually going to do a huge rectangular line, like that line right there, but it's facing the completely wrong direction. He has to run through at least three of those. If he doesn't run through three of those. It does this. It wipes just about everybody. So, it takes a lot of damage. The more it, you take more damage, or you take less damage, the more lights that he goes through. Okay, so he didn't go through any that time. We didn't know what we were doing. You gotta actually get that line through to go through at least three of those, those light circles. So this is the same mechanic as the first boss again, where you gotta uh, get in real close to him. He does do a claw in front of him as well, so you can't be standing in front of him like you saw right there. He does do this same mechanic again, so he double hits me. I panic, I use my alt. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna die. He double mechanic me. That's fine. All right, so you see that person right there? They have the letters above their name, their head. So that person needs to make sure they get him to run through at least three of those golden circles on the ground. So you see the person's moving it. Okay, so they got him to run through two. So we're still gonna take damage, just not as much damage. So you see those two people died over there because they were real close to him. So the boss is at 17%, it looks like. And it's just me and the tank. <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure if he's gonna do the line thing again or what so I I'm like okay so I have I understand what I'm supposed to be doing now no revives left uh, I think he's gonna do it about to do it to me because he just put those words above my head but then he doesn't I'm like okay I guess you're not gonna do it okay you're not doing the mechanic cool but I still want to make sure I'm hiding behind three of these and trying to keep the tank alive so I have the option so let's go sneak over here in case he tries to run we'll at least be through three of them so that way we don't die and I'm a light bringer, so I'm putting up 120,000 DPS, 17% to go. Uh, he he doesn't enrage because this is just an adventure dungeon. Still relatively hard. This is the third boss in Rebirth Monastery. To do that mechanic correctly, he has to run through three of those uh, golden things on the ground. So it's it's crucial for placement the first time around. So I'm, I'm thinking he's not doing any more mechanics here because I'm just standing here twiddling my thumbs like, I guess you're not going to charge or do anything. <laughs> so then I'm like, okay, I'll come out and join my buddy out here. Just got to make sure I dodge that claw.
Luckily it was the healer in the tank that survived because if it was any other combo of two people, it wouldn't have worked. And if obviously the healer's doing some DPS, so. Those guys are just chatting, having a good time. They're figuring it out as I figure it out with the two to three. Has to run through at least three of them. So here I'm, I'm like, I guess he's not doing any mechanic. Let me run out. Stand behind him. Uh, he gets low. It was pretty fun though. Um, I could see it definitely being a little bit more difficult or a lot more difficult with Overlords. That's awesome. And uh, it's, it, if you're lower gear score or anything like that, this is a 240 gear score requirement. It does drop 248 to 252, I believe it was. So it does drop some decent gear. Make sure you guys get in there and check it out. I hope this helps you, you know, complete it the next time that you guys run it. I know this wasn't the smoothest run. We just went in there, recorded it. Um, did the best that we could with the crew that I, I was able to get together. We did get it done. It's not pretty, but it was complete. Now that you guys learned from our mistakes, that way the next time you can go out there and nail it. Thank you guys for tuning in as always. Legit here. Make sure if you like this video, you hit that like button as well as the subscribe button. And as always, I will see you next time.